Hi everybody, I'm Q and welcome back to my tapes. I I am addicted to music and I think you are too. I think you are too. Editing me, roll the clip. Uh. Uh. Yes sir. So the only logical place for me to start this conglomeration of thoughts is the passion. I feel a lot of passion and heart and spirit when I listen to music and and, and it's, it's it's I'm not going to be able to explain these things well in this video. Hopefully when I kind of put in these clips of these videos and you just hear the sounds and you hear the beginnings, I'm just like this feels like life music. It feels like theme song music. It feels like music is able to theme different parts of my life and I'm passionate about that. I'm passionate about that and it gives me passion for things that might not even relate to the song itself. I'm really, really passionate about the way that this stuff makes me feel. And speaking of feelings, it pretty much leads us into our next section, the pain. There's so much pain that I feel as though I'm able to re-experience or to articulate through the sounds that I hear in music. And, and I don't know what other mediums are able to really make me feel this way. I think I, I think I would say something like, you know, writing like books, but I think someone has to be a really good writer for that to set the scene for you. I feel like music, however, is a sort of interactive medium where you are able to experience it in 3D. I feel like when it comes to like audio visual content, Audiovisual content, I feel, is is one of those few mediums that are able to transport you into a certain space. You know, when people, you know, they have your breakup song, you have songs of happiness, you have the song where you were driving in your friend's BMW and you almost crashed it. Um, all sorts of just songs that are able to transport you to certain memories, some of which are sad. <laughs> some of which are sad. But like I said in the beginning, I feel as though music is able to sometimes contextualize my my pain and my sadness. <laughs> um and I, I'm wondering if I should have combined like the sections of pain and sadness, but they're not quite the same, um, which is why I think the articulation thing is very, very important for me. Let's go on to the next section, the sadness. <laughs> I feel like music is able to give me, I feel like when I'm listening to music that's able to articulate my pain, I feel like that's when I feel like the sadness of it all. Like, wow, not only do I feel like this song and this music is able to find the words that I don't have, but now that they do have the words that I don't have, I'm now dry heaving, crying and vomiting, <laughs> throwing up on the floor. Um, and it's an experience. I feel like with the sadness that I feel as though music sometimes brings me, I feel as though it's also comfort because it's able to say things that I can't say, which I know it's, it's just like, why do you keep, artic why do you keep saying articulation? Like you get addiction, all this mu music and words, but I feel like it's also, it's also just able to mirror emotions in my heart, <laughs> which is why I said, you know, music makes me think, you know, there's so many situations in which music can apply to, um, and where it shows up and how I can listen to, Oh my gosh, I can listen to a Florence and the Machine song and I can think of something. I can listen to this Frank Ocean song and think of this person I met when I was at this internship on the West Coast. I can think of so many things. I can recall so many things. And it gives me a ting of pain in the chest. It gives me a ting of pain in the chest, um, a ting of sadness. I listen to music sometimes and I just cry. You know, sometimes like, I'm sad about things or I cry about things that aren't quite sad, but I feel like I feel the sorrow that I'm not able to understand outside of, I feel other contexts. Um, yeah, <laughs> hopefully that makes sense. And you know, that pretty much leads us to our next section, the happiness. So I would say this is our second to last, um, section the next one is going to be or would I ever make music the happiness 
I had to leave it on a good note. Music makes me feel so happy. Um, music makes me feel so happy. And I think, I think the happiness is paralleling with the section at the very beginning, the passion, because I feel like music in, in the ways that music is able to make me feel happy, music is also able to just put me in the right state of mind. Um, there's something about listening to the way people produce beats and produce these drum sets and these 808s and throw things together and talk about random things. You know, some not all, not all music people talk about their own personal experiences, but there's something about experiencing this upbeat and this tempo and the words and the sounds together with somebody that made the song that makes me just feel so happy, which Reminds me of the thing that I said in the beginning also about theme music. I definitely have songs that are like my theme song. If you have a song that you would say, if you walked into a room, this is what would be playing. This is like your, this is your soundtrack, okay, on the sitcom. Please comment below with the artist. I love discovering music. I love discovering music. Um, <laughs> so if you have a theme song or a song that you think is your theme song, put it down below. There are a few that I think are mine. So I'll kind of give a few examples. One Thing by A. Marie. Oh my gosh. Which ones? Um, Seeing Green, I'm not going to lie. There's something about like the background vocals that's very like, very glorious, very gospel, very just like huge horns, huge announcements, huge debut, which is why I also chose this background color, yellow. Very just like joyful and very just like boom, 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 boom. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Um, and with that said, yeah, I think I really would say I love like the beats of go-go music, um, so, like DC beats. Like I love that. I love like, I, I think this is just nostalgia because I used to live in New Jersey, but yeah, like New Jersey mixes. I, you know, it is what it is. Um, also some Louisiana, yeah, some Louisiana tempos. I really, really f like, I, I feel is very nostalgic. And I think that's, I, I think about s some of the, um, I think of some of the cultures in Louisiana of uh, some of the black Americans. And it, and it just reminds me of some of the cultures that I know of in West Africa and Central Africa that have very interesting and similar like beats and tempos and sounds and like cries and shouts. And, and it just makes me so happy. So if you do have a theme song, please put it down below. But that I would say summarizes the happiness that I feel like I'm able to feel from music and how that makes me feel. Um, and let's go on to the last portion. Would I ever make music? Maybe I do make music. Yeah. Would y'all, would y'all recognize? Like, I don't know. What if I told you I do? What if I told you I do make music and it's like on the top 10? I don't know. What would you guys do? Which is why I, I think about how recognizable my voice is. I never said I do, but I'm just, you know, hypothetical question, hypothetical question. So would I ever make music? I've written, I, like, I've definitely written some stuff. Um, I'm still writing. I think when it comes to art, it just takes time. <laughs> I think it takes time to think about stuff. There are things that I've thought about, sounds that I've just recorded. I'll open the notes app, record some notes or some strings, write some raps or write some songs. Um, and so even if I don't share it with anybody, I would say, yeah, I would, I would definitely make music if I haven't already. <laughs> Wink. Um, <laughs> so, so, so coy. Would you ever make music? And, it, and you know what? I think audiovisual content, maybe we could spread like the fan a little bit. Would you ever make like audiovisual content? Like, would you write a book? Would you make like a fictitious like podcast with like, I don't know, sound effects and fictional stories? Actually, that's actually something that I wanted to say. Like, if I ever made like, outside of like a talking podcast, something that I've always wanted to do just because of how I, I perceive music I would love to make a podcast where it's just like a story. It, it's not real life. It's more of something fictitious, um, something fictitious with like a story and sound effects, like that sound and hearing these sound effects and people walking and things creaking and, and just being able to hear that, I think would be very, very cool and be a very interesting experience for me. Um, so 
yeah, would you ever make audiovisual content? Would you ever want to write a show? Would you ever want to write like a TV series? I've always wanted to write like my own anime or like my own like cartoon. I know they're not the same. They're kind of, but not, they're not the, you know what I mean? Like there's a difference. Like I've always wanted to write like a show that's animated. And then I've always considered like, well, what if I also made like an anime? Would you write it? What? You know what I mean? Like, I just want to hear, I'm so curious. What would you guys do? What would you guys do if you could make any sort of audiovisual content? What would it be? All right. And I would say that's the end of my thoughts about my addiction to music. I am addicted. I am addicted to music. And I think you are too. If you enjoyed anything that you just watched here, you got to head down to the description box. Go ahead to that link. I'm starting a Patreon or like a private paid community. Um, I'm still deciding which one I want to use. But if you're interested in anything you just saw there, please get on the wait list. A uh, couple of you. I'm like, I'm like really like people are signing up for this. So sign up. It's down below. It's a Google form. Put your info below so that I can keep you kind of updated on rolling that out so that I can provide you more of these kind of episodes and segments. Thank you so much. Let's get back to the clip. Come on, come on, you. I was going to go live and like kind of talk about um, the bonnets, but it's just like, are we really talking about this again? Like, really? We have to talk about respectability politics again? Like, like, and I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there with Monique, but like some, like the first thing that I thought of after I did some research and kind of watching her, what she said and reactions and all of this is just like, you don't wear bonnets and you are professional. However, you've still received racism and misogynoir. So what does that tell us class? Come on, come on. You know, and so I just feel like <sighs> throughout all the professionalism that you have professionalized, People still treat you like shit. People still blackballed you for calling out being underpaid. People still people still underpaid you. People still treated you. People still try to ex exploit you and ask you to show up to appearances and press promos that you weren't even compensated for. Like you are st you are literally right now taking something to pre the Supreme Court, I believe Netflix, I think, for racism right now. You don't wear bonnets. So, who cares about people respecting you or not? They don't respect you. <laughs> Nobody cares. Like, nobody cares about your humanity. Like, nobody cares about my humanity. And, like, I don't know if, like, a bonnet is going to change that. But I feel like we know that. Do people not know that? So why are we discussing it? Does that make sense? Which reminds me, I am starting a Patreon or, like, a private community, private paid community. Please go to the description box below so that if you would like to see just different content and if there are things that you want me to talk about ASAP, like there are things that I want to talk about, but I talked about this in another video. Things that I want to talk about are, I feel like not all of it is meant for the public domain, right? So I, I just feel like the internet is not a safe space. Does that make sense? I want a safe space to just let my heart out and feel my feels. But I feel like the internet sometimes is just not that place to feel that spectacle, Um which is also why I'm like leaning towards lives where like some of them I might keep up, but then some of them maybe I could take it away. Um, yeah. So I do have things I want to talk about, but just, you know what I mean? So just let me know your thoughts. As you can see, my head is a little scrambled right now. So let me know what you think. These are the announcements. Thank you so much for listening to another one of my tapes and I will see you guys later. Bye. I wear glasses. I think I've mentioned this a little bit, but I just wanted to put this note at the very beginning of the video. A part of the way that I live my life is, is in the body and experience that I am in. Um, a few things that I, I'm sure I'll bring up in the future, but one of them that I know I have mentioned is that I do wear glasses. Um, and that I can't see actually, <laughs> I actually can't see, um, by a lot. And so a lot of what I have experienced growing up, not really having great eyesight and having to use like help, um, or like visual, um, aids is, is, is sound. Sound has been super, super important. The way that I experience sound, that, that description color is very, very specific and very real for my life. So with that, let's start.